So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about something called scrambling, which is that funny border between hiking and rock climbing where a lot of people tend to get stuck. So in this video, I'm sharing a couple of techniques, some exercises, and some tips, things to keep in mind as you begin to build more confidence and move into vertical terrain. Let's get into it. I love scrambling, it's one of my favorite things to do in the mountains. A little bit more of an adrenaline rush than just regular hiking but not as committing as rock climbing. Having said that, scrambling is probably more dangerous than rock climbing because you're generally not using a rope, or at least I'm not. So there's a couple of safety things to keep in mind that I wanna go through first. So the most important thing with scrambling is the safety of you and everyone else around you. So a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. Firstly, at some stage, you're probably going to dislodge a rock, whether it's by accident or maybe on purpose if you're testing a hold, which I recommend you do. If you've lost control of the rock and it's rolling down, then you need to be yelling out either rock or below or whatever the local custom is in your area, you need to be letting the people know below you that there's a rock coming down. If you do dislodge a rock while you're testing a hold, just leave it where it is. Don't frisbee it off the cliff because you never know who's gonna be down there. It could be a climber, it could be a hiker, someone just enjoying their day is gonna cop a rock on the head. So don't purposefully frisbee rocks off mountains. I know some of these things are gonna seem like common sense, but we just have to say them. As you're moving up and down the slope, keep in mind that you wanna be going slow, controlled, and silent. So with every placement that you make, whether it's a foothold or a handhold, Try and do it very purposefully. Try and make as little noise as possible. And that will naturally make you kind of pay attention and maintain control. If you get a little bit overconfident, if you go too fast, then you might commit to a very weak hold or lose your balance. And also, I find it's best to take small steps. This means you're not gonna get as tired as you would. You can imagine taking huge steps requires a lot of effort and it does throw you off balance as well. So take small steps, make small movements and stay in control. So when I approach a steeper kind of area, there's a couple of things that I do just to make me feel a little more safe. Firstly, make sure your shoes are tied up. For obvious reasons, if your shoes are loose, then it's gonna make things more difficult. I will also cinch my backpack down and bring it in really close to my body. That will bring your center of gravity in a lot closer and just kind of make you feel more comfortable. You don't want your pack swinging around left to right, throwing you off balance when you're going up steep sections. And the third thing I do that if I'm approaching a steep section that looks like it's gonna go on for a while, I'll actually put my trekking poles away just because a lot of the time it's easier to just use my hands and get into more of a crawl than it is to try and walk upright with trekking poles on steep terrain. So what I'll do now is I'll demonstrate a couple of different scrambling styles. Now, it's not up to me to tell you which one's the safest or the best. I'm just offering these to you. If you wanna try them out and see which one works best for you, then you can start to build from there. Each one of these can be used in different situations on different types of rock and different types of conditions. It's best to learn as many and master as many as you can so that you've got kind of a repertoire of skills to work with. So a common misconception about scrambling and climbing is that you need a great deal of upper body strength, which really isn't true. It's kind of the opposite. Most of the time you're gonna be relying on your legs and you want your legs to do most of the work. The upper body will tire very quickly doing a lot of pulling. So mainly when you're looking for holds, you wanna spend most of your time looking for good footholds. I mean, a good handhold is nice. <laughs> it's nothing better than grabbing a really solid jug and pulling up on it. But for the most part, you wanna be worrying about what your feet are doing. When you eventually get to a spot where you think it might be useful to start using your hands, and just remember that as soon as you come down, things are immediately going to feel a lot steeper. You'll be looking down through your feet. You might see a big drop below you and start panicking. But just remember, most of the time, it's steeper than you think, so you could probably just kind of stand up. But always keep a hand on the rock, or maybe even drop a knee down, so you feel more comfortable. When you do find some good footholds and some hand holds, you can start moving over the rock in whichever way feels naturally best for you. There's a lot of different patterns that we can use, moving quadrupedally with four limbs, but I would say just use the one that fits best with the situation. Move based on where your footholds and handholds are, not trying to move in a certain pattern. They're the kind of patterns that we use in training to build the skills, but make the decision based on the holds. So as you begin to crawl up, 
looking for good footholds first, and then looking for handholds that will complement the footholds that you're using. I've got a mantle here, I've got a, a good solid handhold, and I can press up one lane at a time. Now I can start looking for my next move. Footwork and foot technique is something that's really important as well. So when you're moving up, there's two main ways that you can use your feet, and that is smearing and edging. So smearing is essentially aiming to get as much contact between your foot and the rock as possible. It really helps to kind of drive your heel down. That's when dorsiflexion of the ankle comes in handy. But smearing is, you know, naturally what most people are gonna go for, trying to get as much contact with the foot as possible. Edging is the other main footwork technique that we can use, and that's a matter of placing the edge of your boot or shoe on a rock and placing the weight of your body through into that corner to really leverage that spot. When it comes to grabbing trees, I would tend to avoid it. I think of it kind of as, a, as an act of desperation. I very rarely grab on trees, firstly because we don't want to harm the environment, but secondly because rocks are usually a lot stronger. Okay, now we're going to have a look at something slightly more committing. So things to keep in mind, you want to be moving slowly, thinking about every single placement that you make, both for your hands and for your feet. And don't go up anything that you're not confident in coming down. Now when you get to something like this, when you have to, obviously you could go around here, that would be the safer option. Sometimes you'll have to take quite a big step up now only do this if it's your only option and make sure if you're doing it then you're that you're able to reverse it so that's a big step up what i'm going to do is rock my weight over this way so then all my weight a lot of my weight is committed to that leg looks like a solid hold so i push my weight over try and find something i could press away here i don't know if you can see that but i've got a a good hand hold there that I can mantle and press, and that's going to create an opposing force, which is gonna keep body tension. And just remember, when you do make these moves, three points of contact is the safest way to do it, and just moving one limb at a time. So when we're ready to commit, roll over. It's taking my weight, that's fine. Now we can roll and press up. So just make one decision at a time. Got another mantle there. And I can finish up. There we go. When it comes to descending, a lot of people when they're first starting will be more comfortable going face down first and kind of butt sliding down like this. And that's totally fine, but it does put you in a position where things feel a lot more steep and potentially a lot more dangerous if you were to fall forward. So I generally recommend for beginners to switch around and down climb face into the rock. So switching around and down climbing, it does limit your vision a little bit in terms of your foot placements, but for beginners I found that once I <laughs> recommend that they switch over, they generally are a lot more comfortable just because they can get their weight on their feet, they're closer to the rock, and they have a better relationship with a vertical environment facing in. But again, it's gonna depend on each situation and what kind of terrain you're moving over. One thing you can try out when you have a little bit more confidence when you're coming down is to try and stay off your hands completely. And this really forces you to make good decisions about where you put your feet. This is a little drill I like to do if I've got a bit of extra time, if I'm waiting for people behind me, I'll play this game where I can't touch the rock and I just have to make really smart decisions about where I put my feet. And it's a great little drill to work on balance and confidence on steep terrain. At first you can have your hands out to protect you and to aid for a bit of balance. Eventually, if you're a boss, you can put your hands in your pockets. <laughs> but that's a little bit of a flex. Don't do that. 
So what I've shared with you here is just variations of movement. These are skills that you can build, tools to have in your toolbox to get you outside of tricky situations when you're in the mountains. But they're also just basic movements that you can train. If you like these kind of movements and you want to practice them at home in a type of workout, then check out this video. This is a follow along routine that is designed specifically to improve scrambling skills and confidence. So if you want to check that out, follow along to it. It'll be right here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on the summit.